Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Good morning out there to you. I am your host, Patricia Leonard. And as you remember, if you've been here before, I'm always talking about the show is focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And the way we do that is we have guests on the show that share about their life journey and hello self moments that they may have had that changed the trajectory of their life and career and or career. Today, we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, I have two guests, Pam Tate and C4. And welcome, ladies. Hello. Thank you. Yes, of course. As long as I've known most of you, I still am anxious to hear your story because I will learn something from it too. Each of them are going to share their own Hello Self moments. They're in their life and career journey, whatever they want to share. And then we'll talk a little bit about or reflect on High Heels Cabaret. That is a show that I have just introduced or created, and they were two of the performers in it. So we'll reflect on that after you get to know who they are and the talent they have. They're both singers, but they're going to tell you more about that, how they got there and why they decided to. They're singers, songwriters, and more. So just sit back and enjoy. And I'll start with Pam. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you like for me to tell your audience, Patricia, my story, how I got into music? Yes, when and... you left, I d- start from the beginning as a little girl or a high school person. But yeah, start where you were. Let them know you're from Indiana. Me too. I grew up. Yep. I grew up in Indiana (laughs) with fellow Hoosiers. What was uh, the Hello Self moment that made you go into performing and what you do? I want they want to hear that. I can tell you what made me that Hello Self moment for me was when I was five years old, and I was at my little friend Kaneta Swetnam's house for sleepover. I had gone there after our dancing class on Saturday morning. And we, there was a movie on TV and I don't, didn't know even what it was at the time, but I do know that now it was Fred Astaire and Sid Charisse and they were dancing. They had come out from a buggy in Central Park where they danced in the park and then they just beautifully danced right back into the buggy and it took off. And I remember that's exactly when I turned to Kaneta and said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sing and dance in New York. And I did. So my whole I life at, at that point, I think I had to have had a past life or something connected to New York because from that moment on, I never considered anything else. And I really never, I never considered any other career. I just, I took every lesson, every dance, singing, piano, music lesson i i was one of those thespians in the high school that got all the the lead roles what can i say and (laughs) when i was and i always talked about going to new york but then on the day that i was 20 years old not that exact day but when i went to tell my mother i'm ready i'm going she said but people like us don't do that i said what are you talking about i've been talking about my whole life she didn't really think i'd go but i did and I never look back. Mm-hmm. See, it's very interesting that hello self moment for you. You were very small, but you never backed off of that journey, that mission. And it's taken you to so many places. What, did, what were some of the first excitements you had when you got to New York? 
or maybe hello self moments. <laughs> I remember when I first got there, that I one of the things I absolutely loved was to walk down the street and hear people speaking in different languages. I loved oh. that. Mm -hmm. Within three weeks, I had um, auditioned for and got into a band, just a regular kind of top 40 band. We played around the tri-state area and I made good money at it. And we'd often play in New Jersey. And when we would come back to the city, I moved there the same year the World Trade Center opened, the towers opened. So those lights, those incredible lights and the, all the skyline of the city was so, I mean, I couldn't, I kept pinching myself that I was there. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> one of the things that we would do, we'd play until quite late and we would decide to go to Chinatown about four in the morning for breakfast. And it was the first time I'd eaten Chinese food. Oh, and I, wow. that was the beginning of an era. But there yeah. were many times, I mean, my career just, it, it just developed and it grew. And in the meantime, I worked jobs in places that taught me a lot about maybe a more sophisticated lifestyle. Lord and Taylor, designer clothing, I worked there and great jobs in order to, that I, where I learned so much. I right. raised a daughter, which made that created difficulties but also more joy than you can ever say and i just want to let my audience know since i didn't pam went to new york she's a blues singer and a jazz singer plays the piano does acting makes movies so i i didn't say all those things but those are wake up moments that she said i'm going to do something else can you tell us a little bit more about that part of your life, how you came into that specific area of performing and singing and uh, entertaining? Yeah, I think, I mean, I was actually singing and making a little bit of money from it when I was starting when I was about 15 years old. And that just kind of continued to grow. As I said, I got into that band and then I got this wonderful job for a singer, steady job in New York, which were That's not, good. Only, yeah, not easy to come by, really. Right. Uh, I sang at a very famous tourist restaurant, which is no longer there, called Mama Leone's. And it was in the theater district. And I was one of three duos. It was a huge place with many different rooms. And I was one of three duos that walked around and sang and then took requests and people would ask me about the city. And so I felt like I was kind of a hostess telling people what <laughs> was cool to do and what not to do, where not to go, where to go. So that was great. And when I left that job, I had started writing songs and I had a song list with, that I, songs I knew with my keys. And it was about, about 300 songs on that list. So that wow. set me up to be able to go work anywhere really that, a wide variety of singing was required. And I did the same thing kind of at a restaurant called The Cattleman, where I'm very much the hostess and the singer. And actually, that's where I met my husband. And then I also had this, the chance to sing for World Yacht, which were dinner boats that go around Manhattan. And that was a great steady job, oh, too. Wow. For yeah. three years. And I got done early enough at 10 o'clock that I could dash to a cabaret club and do a show after that. So, yeah, for instance, I was, I was very busy. The, the, speaking was very of cabaret, yeah, speaking of cabaret show, this high heels cabaret that we're pr putting on now is that I, I came up with the idea, but I think it was interesting. The person who really encouraged me, go for it, Patricia was Pam. And that tells me, and I did it because of her. And then I came up with a name and she said, no, not that name. Oh no. <laughs> and then I came up with a second name, but it was the things that we learn in our own life, we can share with others. And that's one thing that I know about Pam is she is encouraging of others. Yes. And I well, really for a while I was yeah, I, I had a music career where I had my own band and I was touring around, which I ended up doing also here in Nashville. But then I became 
involved in the cabaret scene in New York. And I performed there. And then I also became the associate director for the International Cabaret Conference at Yale, which was a summer program of master classes. And we had students that came from all over the world, already pro most of, mostly professional singers, but right. those who wanted to de delve deeper into the art of cabaret. And so that was a really wonderful experience to meet so many people and to help to facilitate their development as cabaret singers and many i get emails all the time from announcing different shows all over the world south africa japan colorado uh, florida england yeah, yeah. We, we met a lot of wonderful people and very talented people and i felt That's very lucky yeah. yeah i felt lucky to be able to be involved and help them find their path yes. into that world and we're going to talk a little bit more at the end from each of these artists about advice that they would give you. Uh, I wanted you to kind of get to know them a little bit. And um, we'll come back to Pam again, but I'd like to go. I, I think Pam's already said this. We're all living here in Nashville right now. And that's how we came together is we were in women in film and television and but here's how I met C4, the next guest who's going to share a little bit about her life. I, hey, yes. And so I went to, I was invited to poetry read by a friend that I had met here in Nashville. And I decided to go just to see what it was about. It was at Scarrett Bennett, which is part of Vanderbilt. And when I got there, I had my idea about high heel cabaret, and I thought maybe I'll meet some people there that might be interested. Lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. I met C4, who, who's going to give you her uh, story in a few seconds. But this woman, it just like Pam, she is so talented. And I really believe it was a godsend that we are, because we, in a very short time, we have come, become friends, and she is so talented, just like Pam, and um, has so much to give and gives it. So C4, could you share a little bit of your journey? I don't know if you're from Nashville originally, but I'm going to learn about this woman too, because I only know her from about three weeks now. <laughs> so C4, take it from here. Thank you. Thanks, Patricia. It's so nice oh, to be sure. here. Hi, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very honored to be on this podcast. Thank you so much. And I am half Persian. So I was born here in America, in Mar DC area, and then moved to Iran till I was five years old. And my mother used to be in plays when I was a child in theater. And I remember one of my earliest memories was watching my mother practice in a play of uh, Free to Be You and Me. There's a land that I come where the children are free. And I remember watching my mother. She's this gorgeous, blonde, thin rail sitting on a swing, swinging on this stage. And I just thought, wow, it was just amazing that you can sing and swing and dance and, and just be in such <laughs> yeah. a nice place and the music really it gave me a feeling that I really really loved my next earliest memory was Leo Sayer when I need love yeah. and I would put the headphones on in my parents bedroom and just sing that song over and over again and this was during the 70s and then in the mid 70s, I we moved to Maryland on a horse farm. And so I grew up on a horse farm. And that was it's an incredible adventure. I really wanted my genre to be rock and roll. My influences, of course, songwriters from the, the Gambler and Dolly Parton and the nine to five movies and uh, Dukes of Hazards. I grew up watching <laughs> Love Boat and Fantasy oh. Island and all of the Brady Bunch had a theme song and I just loved these 
shows. I grew up, I grew up on television and, and in the, with animals. And so I was very surprised when I began songwriting later in life that I was country and folkish because I really wanted to be rock and roll. And so, so I began to do theater. I went to camp every summer and did theaters. And I grew up watching Annie and Cats in the in DC and into the woods and just was immersed in either performing or watching or buying the record and singing it over and over. And, and Olivia Newton-John was a huge influence to me in Greece and uh, these sorts of things. And so I was in, and when I was also about maybe eight or eight, eight years old, 10 years old, I would take the Elvis, I had this Elvis gold album and I would take it to school every day for show and tell. And I would sing and dance to Hound Dog <laughs> over and over <laughs> every day. I don't even know how long. So when he passed away, I was very sad, of course. And, uh, and, uh, and I was in school, maybe about 14 years old and Star Search was kind of becoming a thing. And I had, my teacher said, you should really go get on Star Search and I was a very shy child. I didn't really tell my parents about it. And they didn't know really how to support me in this dream of being on stage. And I, I could envision myself. And yes, I did perform all through school in choruses. And I took singing lessons and I took music lessons and I took piano and these sorts of things. And, and then ended up, and then I discovered partying and boys and so, and uh, and I was also headed. I was also during my high school years headed towards the United States equestrian team with horses. So horses had really taken a big part of my life up. So anything creative and connected with animals was my path. And music was because I had dreams. I, I knew that I was going to be around music in some capacity in my entire life. And so. In high school, I went to a school in California and Jesse Diamond, Neil Diamond's son, went to that school and him and I used to sing Jim Croce songs together all the time. They kept putting us together and putting us in front of the school. So it just he'd play guitar and I would sing and different songs. And, and so I'd been a, a cover singer my most of my life. Oh, and then I got into the, the D.C. and Houston punk rock scene. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And because I met people that like to uh, party. <laughs> and and so I was involved to, and got to see a lot of my friends skyrocket, like Fugazi and Bad Brains and these artists that I was uh, around, Bouncing Souls, and then Houston and D with DRI and all of these incredible bands that have become world touring, famous punk rock people and legendary and then, and I never performed. It's so interesting that I had gotten through, gone through this entire music scene or section of my life and never thought one time to get on the stage. And, and then it got, uh, partying ended, grew up a little bit and had some kids and I was home with my children all the time. And I thought, I just haven't really done a lot with music lately. I, I think I'm home with the children. I want to play music. And so, but I thought I'm just going to write my own songs and do it, just do my thing. And so I did, I got a, I got ripped off on my first guitar that I bought in Colorado and I had to, <laughs> took it to a music teacher, Evans Music City in Houston, Texas. And I paid $40 an hour, one day a week, which for a single mother of two young children was a huge and a lot of money for me. I mean, it was either pay him or have gas. I mean, I had visions. I mean, there was a couple times when I was like, all right, I'm 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 just going to put the kids in the stroller. I'm going to walk five miles. I'm going to have this lesson and walk because I just didn't know if I would make it on the gas. And But it it's like these divine things just kept happening. I started writing songs in open tuning, so I didn't have to focus so much on being an actual guitar player. I could just write songs and sing them in front of people. I started going to open mics. My friend's son began, um, had a project where they were filming with Rap-A-Lot Records and a video production. It was a, an apprentice for musicians and they taught us how to get out there, book gigs, and they had contests for us. And I was a semi-finalist in that. And and I'd actually been on the, the filming set of 
Proud to Be a Gangster by Scarface in the Houston in the <laughs> 90s. And uh, I knew Quentin Tarantino for a little while. He was, I went to the premiere of Reservoir Dogs with him and he was a, became a friend of mine and just had all these brushes with actors and music and theater. And so I began to sing my own songs and I was horrible. I made people, my friends' ears bleed for probably two or three years, but but I was a master horseback rider and I knew the level of dedication it takes to get to master level. So I knew this journey zero to rock star would be very hard. And so I started filming my life called zero to rock star. And I'll do these episodes and even on my reverb nation. Now I still have my early songs on there. I'm not afraid to look to suck because <laughs> What happens when you suck is somebody who's in the audience or in their room or in their house or wherever they may be listening to this terrible music thinks, oh, I can do way better than that. <laughs> and then it inspires them. <laughs> to so you give them, so C4, you give them a hello self moment, right? <laughs> yes, I do. I do. So I've spent, I knew the journey would be a lot. So I just filmed it and thought it would be important to have it chronic, chronicled for whoever, whatever. One day I'm going to put it all together in a little film. But, and so I shared that with people. And when I first started doing this and going to open mics a couple of nights a week, people would laugh at me. People would get up and walk away. I would go to my music teacher crying. He said, don't worry about them. Whether they love you or hate you, that's not the point. The point is you are doing this because you want to do this. This is for you. I had gone through some let, domestic... Let me just highlight that. I think that is a key point right there. Pam did the same thing. Do it for yourself. Follow your heart and do it for yourself. So a great idea about a hello self moment. Don't give up is what these artists are telling you in the audience right now. Don't give up and That's just keep following your heart because it will lead you to, through Hello Self Moments, it will lead you to completing your dream if you just keep going. Yes. Oh, good points, both of you on that. Yes. It, it, I had to grow spiritually in my faith and my walk and my where I felt my path was supposed to be in music, but I knew the growing pains were going to be very uncomfortable, especially at my age with children and all this stuff. Uh, but I knew there was a reason uh, to be there and for for people to watch my process, much like my process in, in, with God when I was saved. My family is not religious and they were just like, what happened to you? Are you a nun? <laughs> I'm like, I hope not. I don't want to be a nun. <laughs> I don't really know yet, but through the grinding, through the process of developing myself as an artist, it, it made me develop myself as a Christian and, and I was, am, and have been able to be a, a lighthouse to many people to, that they see this person in public <laughs> doing terribly. And then they see me a year later and five years later and 10 years later, and they're like, whoa, I always thought about writing a book and watching you I think maybe I can write that book or I can so today through this process I've gotten pretty good and and, it, <laughs> and fairly solid and I stay real and I stay learning I write new material and I take it out there and throw it against the wall all the time and I set scenarios up where I'm able to have shows where I can do that I host a lot of open open mic type environments and I actually keep several uh, gigs at Nashbox Studios. Which, um, I go there twice a month to play outside on a patio where there's hardly anybody. It's next door to the listening room so you get a few <laughs> people there and you get some people on the sidewalk but there's no pressure. I don't get paid and so I can invite new people or people coming to Nashville and want to experience that dream. I, I have a stage for them and so I try to stay open to people who are really interested in helping um, grow themselves and have pick my brain and do all these sorts of things. And, and I've been able to help pe people immensely, which is very gratifying for me. And I get to do my thing, which is sing songs I write in front of people. This is 
what you both have been talking about is so important. Now you're taking what you've learned, just like I said, Pam encouraged me to go on with my idea, even though I'm sometimes thinking to myself, what are you doing in this water? You have no idea how to swim. And, and then C4 comes along and she talks about just be yourself. Just be yourself. Somebody will listen. Just be yourself. And I, C4, can you show us that little sign that your daughter made? Mm -hmm. This is something when C4 and I first signed on today, we were talking about, I said to her, do you ever feel alone? Do you ever feel like, where am I going? What am I doing? I'm by myself and blah, blah, blah. And she said, of course. And if you out there feel alone in your dreams and goals and you don't know who could support you, do what these ladies have said to you. They've given you some great advice. Just go talk to somebody. I talked to Pam about this. Then it led me to C4. Then it led me to uh, a TV production show that I was totally lost in. <laughs> but... Uh, being alone, yes, I don't think there's any of us that don't feel that at some point, even though our journey continues on. And I asked her, what is, where'd that sign come from? She said, her daughter, no one is alone. So if we can get influences from our children, just go do it, mom, just go do it, sister, just go do it, whatever. But thank you for showing that because I want the audience to know you are not alone. Let us know what your dreams are. And here are two ladies right here that will help you live your dreams if you want to try to talk to them. At least they'll encourage you. But that's basic things. Pam, if you could give a piece of advice to our audience right now about taking that next step in life, what might you say to them? two things yes one one is basically following up on what you just said when i work with singers about connecting with the lyric of the song for instance yes. a lot of people think that when they get on stage if they sing a song and they make it kind of general then it will appeal to more people because you're not putting a very specific stamp on the song. That's not true. Oh. You have to find you have to find what you connect with in that lyric and make it very personal to you. And then when you are performing that song, everybody feels that emotion and they may feel completely differently about it, but they will feel something. I, I, there's a song, this always comes to mind. There's a specific song that I sang in a concert one night and it's called Love Lost and Found. And afterwards I had some people come up to me. One woman told me, I looked across the table at my boyfriend and I knew it was over. Oh, interesting. Another, oh, wait one up came, another one came up to me and said, I looked at my companion and I knew he was the one. And somebody else came up and said, I'm going to go right home and call my old best friend in California that I haven't talked to in years. So that's the way three different people interpreted that song, but they wouldn't have if I'd just been general about it. They saw the emotion that I had, very specific emotion that I had connected with that lyric and they were able to see it through their own eyes. So that's one thing really, like you were saying, be true to yourself. C4, you said this. And do it for yourself. And then it will communicate itself to others. The second thing, I saw this. In fact, I found a little plaque in a box that of my son's things. And I don't even know who gave it to him. But this was great. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And I think that's a great piece of yes. advice. Yes. That should give a lot of encouragement to 
go ahead, just try it. Somebody will help you with it. Those are, I'm a career coach too. And we were trained, say this, do this, blah, blah, blah. And what C4 and Pam have both been saying, stay true to you. Stay true to you and they will get the emotion. I love that. That's probably one of the most profound things. It's back to that. You may feel alone, but let people know who you are because I'm a big fan of um, America's Got Talent. And I love when those uh, panelists say, just feel it, just do this, just get in it. It doesn't matter about if you're right on key, just sing it. <laughs> and it, th so they come up with the same thing and people will get it. I remember one artist that was on there, he was from Kentucky and he was real shy, didn't say much. And I kept saying, I want you to win here up my bonus room upstairs watching nobody. Yeah. And I kept saying, I want him to win. I want him to win. And guess what? He did. He said he had a wake up moment when he was a little boy. He lived in this small town and he walked past or drove past this sign. And it said all the artists in Kentucky and specifically from that little town. And he said, I want my name up there. That was one of the th he was like 16. He said, I want my name up there. And guess what? He now has his name up there. He got brave enough and America, yes. And America's Got Talent is something that I admire so much. And look what you guys, you're talking about the same thing is here's, just do it, just do it. Get the feeling, just get out there and do it. Somebody's going to benefit and love it and maybe be encouraged by it. Oh, great points, Pam. C. Ford, you got some ideas that you'd like to share with uh, the audience about uh, uh, that you think would maybe go with that sign or whatever you want to share? I think the first piece of advice I always give everybody that asks me is have fun. Enjoy wow. the process. The, being a musician, being a rock star, being an entertainer, a performer, an actor, all of these things, teacher, it's in the process where they, that is the joy for me. Yes, I love to get on stage and see myself grow and being able to play at the Opry Mills Mall on a yeah. Saturday and it actually engage a group of people or wherever my, I may be, like at High Heels Cabaret, and to be able to engage an audience and hold them is wonderful. But that comes through the process and enjoy the process because mm -hmm. it's the same process for everybody. We all have weaknesses and strengths and just have fun in your process and enjoy yourself because the love of music or whatever your artist should come first and the discipline after that because they go hand in hand. It's mm -hmm. important to continue to grow, uh, which is why I've been co-writing so much this year, uh, because uh, it's good for me to grow as an artist, as a writer, as a person. Um, and then to also, just like Pam said, connect with that song. Because if I can't connect with it, I can't perform it. I have to find my voice in that song. Otherwise I lose that connection with who I'm singing to. And mm. those things really do matter. And that honing of that skill and that connecting may take years, months and months of work. I've sang some of my same songs thousands and thousands of times. And they even evolve over time. So art mm -hmm. is an ever moving, ever changing process. And just allow yourself to let go and enjoy yourself and the process. Bravo. Mm -hmm. Great advice. And uh, you're, you guys, both of you ladies are speaking to me too, because I am very hard on myself. I think that I should be perfect and I don't allow myself. And then days later, I still can't sleep because you didn't do your best job. 
So I think that's something that I definitely want to work through is that just the High Heels Cabaret show that we all, maybe we'll kind of jump over to that a little bit now. And because I love be yourself, have fun, be true to you. All these things or the advice is out here coming from these ladies experience. They did it themselves. They walked through and not everything was perfect as they both have shared, but they kept going. So I think that's one of the most important things. And they are speaking to me because I get these ideas, these hello self moments, just like the podcast. And then I get the hello self moments about the high heels cabaret. And then I'm thinking, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do it? You, Yeah. So let's go to and just reflect, if you're ready, just to maybe reflect on the High Heels Cabaret show that we did. And I'll just bring my audience up to date a little bit. I had this dream about uh, a voice that came to me and said, High Heels Cabaret, it was the same one that came about Hello Self, and High Heels Cabaret came. I didn't know what I was going to do with either one of them. And then, like I said, I talked to Pam about what I was feeling, and then she pushed me another step farther into that. And then this weekend, we did a production, a TV production. I had never done a TV production before, and I was supposed to be the producer. (laughs) And so it was very interesting. They, C4 and Pam were both uh, performers in that show. And they have been very kind to me, as bad as I was as a producer, they've been very kind. And their performances were just exactly what I had dreamed of, but didn't really know how to make it happen. So let's look back on that. And the mission of the High Heels Cabaret is to give opportunities, just like they're talking right now, both of them have gone on to good, great careers. But there are a lot of people out there that still need encouragement. That's what they do. They just talked about it. And giving others encouragement, you can walk this path too. So what were some, so that's kind of our mission is to educate, encourage, and entertain in the High Heels Cabaret. So your own thoughts about whatever, Pam, on the High Heels Cabaret uh, show that we did this weekend and any possibility of where you see it might go or could possibly go. I think one thing to point out is when we first talked about it, you were thinking of finding a venue like a club or some sort of... Yes, some sort of performing venue. And as we discussed it, there's all these expenses connected with that, your lighting, your sound person, all of those are extra expenses. And so because you and I had each taken the production course at NECAT, which is the National Public Television Station, they allow people who have taken that class and learned a bit about the equipment to come in and present a show and for no expenses. So I thought that might be a a great place to start the cabaret and it gives people a chance to see themselves also be able to edit their section that they did if they want to promote themselves further. So I think, I think one, one really important thing is to adapt to when something comes to you that kind of turns you around into a new direction to not be afraid of it and to really just, if that's what's supposed to happen, that's what will happen. And I think that was one of the best things to come out of it was to actually put it in a TV setting. And I think it elevates um, the, I think it elevates the show itself and it elevates the city of Nashville by giving public television what it needs, Nashville talent. And for the artists, it gives us a chance to 
I mean, we love playing in clubs, but it's a different kind of thing in a TV show. You feel a different kind of pressure, but it's a good pressure to rise to. So I think it was, I think it's very important when some, when you have an idea about something, it's important to have that idea, but let it flow so that it may not be your preconceived idea, but it turns into something else that is really successful. So true. Yes, you are you are speaking directly to me. And I hope others out there who have a dream, because we're three women who can tell you, yes, it's not all going the way you planned, but take it at a a piece at a time and see where it goes. Because look what I had. I had people like C4 and Pam to help me out. They're seasoned artists. And they came in there because they enjoyed it, not because that's the only opportunity they have. But number one, the relationship that we have. And number two, their talent, sharing that. And number three, encouraging others. So you will find people just like Pam and C4. And I am so grateful for all the stumbling I did. They ironed it all out. <laughs> so that, oh, great, Pam, that's fabulous. So C4, just any insights or any suggestions or any thoughts you have about the High Heels Cabaret and thoughts about other, maybe other opportunities that it might have or anything that we could share with the audience to see others see things through a different lens. So you may be seeing it through, a, you are, you're a performer, seeing it through a different lens than my, I might have seen it or wish for it. So any thoughts that you have about the High Heels Cabaret? <laughs> I did not know this was your first production and I didn't see any, I didn't see any sign of this is my first production. You did an amazing job. It was fantastic. <laughs> that production crew was incredible. You did phenomenally well. I mean, you walked through the filming event like a pro. Uh, you looked great. You sounded great. It, it, it was amazing. I am honored to have been a part of that. I accepted to play because I do, just like Pam. You are a wonderful person, Patricia, and it's just, it's a joy to work for you in any capacity. I enjoy supporting you and other women, of course, yes. their endeavors. It was an opportunity to meet more people and just share my music. And it was a nice experience. I took that class also, <laughs> that production class at no. NECAT. Francesca and I had started, I had a podcast and we didn't have anywhere to edit it. So we went there and took the production class and we haven't taken the editing class. We need to. So it was nice to be back at NECAT and it was, I did not expect all of the chairs to be full. But there were many people there. It was packed. You had mentioned earlier that it wasn't a big audience, but it was pretty crowded in there. Every every chair was full. I met some people. I got to touch some people with my music. I love film. I love the film medium. I love radio medium. I love live performance and recording. So for me, it was just another opportunity to have an experience and to grow for myself and to be around new people and new environments. Thank you. you. Yeah, oh, I, thank you. And you're absolutely right, Pam and uh, C4 both, that NECAT is, it's part of college, Nashville College here in, community college here in town, in Nashville, Tennessee. And it's a nonprofit and for-profit both because it is sponsored by the state of Tennessee um, and the library. And I met some people from the library. And I think that was, it's very important because their whole uh, effort and mission is to help people do what they want to do, specifically in the performing and helping others and learning. Uh, you mentioned the editing. Yes. So Friday, this coming Friday, I'm going to be sitting up there with an associate editing this film that we or this tv show that we just did so it's just like both of you've mentioned it's just another opportunity to learn and to maybe get our own self some ideas about a 
a show you might do. What are you up to next, Pam, with your work? Do you have anything planned? I'm in the post-production phase for the film that I yes. wrote and directed, short film that has also been partly produced by Nashville Women in Film and Television, of yes. which we're members. And are you a member to C4? Yeah, okay. So that's-, that's Not yet, great... I want to be. Oh. She will be, yes. Yeah, it's a good resource. And through a program that they introduced called WIFT Academy, we uh, had we had mentees and mentors who were helping to put this film together. And so I was fortunate enough to write one that was that they wanted to do. And it, it's coming along. I, I think that this week we will, we will lock the final edit. Then it goes to the composer and we'll do the poster and we'll have a wonderful yes. red carpet screening. Yes. And it's exciting. It's a, it's a different, I went to film school and I just will say this too. I think it's, as I said, important to see where things go and not be afraid to follow those. I, I had an injury at one time and I had to stop touring. And so I was stuck at home, kind of half drugged up, watching Sense and Sensibility over and over on HBO. And I had a book on my shelf that I had always wanted someone to adapt into a play so that I could at that time, act the lead in the play. Uh, but I pulled it out and I thought, maybe I could write a movie. And I started highlighting. And then I started writing it in Word, not in a final draft or a, a screenwriting program. In Word, which I found was really difficult later. <laughs> but I loved doing it so much that I was sitting at a computer right next to my kitchen. I was literally writing and making dinner at the same time and running back and forth, but I still <laughs> kept my focus. And I loved it so much that I enrolled in back into college, which I had le not completed because I had left Indiana right. to move to New York and immediately started working. So I went back to school. I got a degree in film studies and writing, screenwriting. And that would not have happened if I hadn't been injured. And it was so frustrating at first that had happened and it shut down a tour that I was really, that was important for me for promoting my second CD. But I was able to find something else. And that has carried through as another line in this creative life that I am blessed with. So. That's something too, I think that it's important mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. allow other things in. And if it turns you on, if you're happy doing it, then you move with it and wonderful things can come with, from that too. And I'm incorporating so a song I wrote it, that is a, featured in the film. And so you know, I'm able to, yes. to pull them all together. Fantastic. And I liked something that you said there barriers may come up that we sometime are disappoint our disappointments come up and we think why now why did this happen and yet it was a trajectory it was a hello self moment you said i'm taking this in this direction i'm right. here at home and i'll just go ahead and take my book so those hello self moments pay attention to them because i like to say there are subconscious nudging us to, hey, maybe we should go this way, or maybe the pause is good. So it's just a, a wake-up call in some cases. Okay, yeah. thanks. That's fabulous. C4, what are some of the things that you may be uh, planning or looking forward to, or maybe Hello Self and High Heels Cabaret has fired you up to do something else? I don't know. What are you after now? My... my love what I really like to do is sing songs I write in front of people so I want to play on stages in front of people that's really what I drives me I'm going to be on the blue plate special coming up pretty soon for my first time so I'm very Yay. excited about that I remember listening to the blue plate special with my stepdad when I was little and, and what a big deal he made out of it and so 
to be able to tell him that I'm going to be on that now is just a dream come true for me. I play every week at Bobby's Idol Hour on Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee, and I play as 1 to 5 p.m. and I bring friends along to help to play with me and I really love doing that they I would call that a residency at this point I'm gonna have some great guests Chris Gantry will be on there not this week but next week so that's uh really excited to see him again he just moved back to Nashville from Texas where I'm from and he gave me a song to sing so it might actually be my first cover yeah, it's important. The It's probably the most important song I've ever sang. It was the, he was standing in front of the Lorraine Hotel in Memphis and where Martin Luther King was shot and died. And he wrote a song and it's that song is, he sent it to me. I listened to it, wrote, tried, wrote all the words down. And then I Googled because I didn't, he didn't tell me anything about the song. Googled it, researched it, asked him about it. He answered maybe one of the questions I sent. And I did all this prep work, but it wasn't until I sat down with my guitar and sang it that I really understood it was his imagination of life leaving Dr. Martin Luther King during that time. And so uh, it really struck me. And so he's asked me to sing that song. So I'll be working on that and, and putting it in my repertoire. Other than that, I don't do covers, but it's an important song. And so just playing and helping people when I can. And every day is a new adventure. I just wake up and turn my life over to God and let him handle the day and my life and just doing great. My daughter's in film school as well right now. And so she's, I get to watch her and she's going to start filming some people that I work with for me that, that are requesting help from me. So I get to go help them and she's going to be a part of that. And so I have stuff like that coming up and yes. writing a lot of new music. So, it's so great. it just goes on and on. If we just keep participating in life, you're saying C4. Yeah. Just to stay in the game. And uh, even though sometimes you feel like you're alone out there, you're not. Something is going to happen if you keep walking. And you ladies have taken uh, maybe the path less trod too a lot of times. But I think that's good because that's how we learn about ourselves and discover. And then we're able to help others. So just as we begin to wrap this up today, I, I just want to say some big suggestions. Be true to yourself. Follow your heart. See your process and just keep creating that process in a movement toward talk to others and let them help you too. reach out to places, maybe take some classes like Pam said, you went back to school and C4 never gives up on anything. She just keeps reaching out and going out there where people see her and she also helps people. And I really like that a lot. So if somebody wanted to get a hold of either one of you, C4, how would they, re if you want, do you have a website or anything like that, that um, they could reach out and learn more about you? I actually have a public telephone number. It's 256-335-3790. Uh, That's all on all of my promotional material. People are welcome to call or text me. And what in any capacity, whether I can help you or lead you in a direction that might get you the help you're looking for, I'm happy to do so in, in any of your endeavors. So that's it. So she says, just reach out and she will help you in whatever way she can. If nothing else, encouragement, even if she doesn't yeah. have a person. Yeah, just yeah. encouragement. Pam, how could we reach you if we wanted to get a conversation or maybe get you to do our film or whatever. <laughs> uh, I think maybe the best way would be through Facebook mm -hmm. and just plug in my name, Pam Tate, and it should come up as a musician. So do that and then send me a private message and that would come right to me, I think. Yes. That'd be a good one. So are you on Facebook too, C4? I am. Uh, yes. Uh, my URL is the four 
disagreements from uh, Toltec. Oh, uh, yeah. A little cool. play on the Toltec because, yeah. like, yes, we want to have our agreements, but honestly, the inspiration for me comes from all the disagreements and the <laughs> iron sharpening. <laughs> yeah. Just a little humor on that. And I'd like to say to the audience, we will have on the podcast, we will have their references and their name spelling and the place that they told you. So we'll have all this detail. So if you don't remember how to get a hold of them, we'll have that when we send out the podcast. And um, I, I hope that this is, and uh, by the way, uh, you can get these podcasts on Spotify. You'll get a, all the podcast outlets we are part of, Hello Self is part of. And so as we leave this session today or this episode today, thank you so much for joining us, audience. Pam, thank you for joining me. And thank and you for C having me. Yes. I, are you kidding? It was a delight. And C4... Thank you for sharing your journey and coming with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. I'm, I'm, Thank you. Yes. And as this is Patricia Leonard again, your podcast host. And I just like to say that we help you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And the statement that I always make in my closing, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe, and remember this, keep dreaming.